Sheets. Zanim przedstawię naszego gościa, powiem, że te spotkania tłumaczone są na język migowy i na język angielski i mogą Państwo brać w nich udział, wpisując pytania do gości pod postem na Facebooku. A dzisiaj gościem sceny premier naukowych Uniwersytetu Śląskiego będzie Grzegorz Paprzycki, młody reżyser, absolwent Szkoły Filmowej im. Krzysztofa Kieślowskiego, I'd, welcome to, I'd like to welcome everyone to the scientific premiere stage. Uh, we will um, have an interview with uh, Grzegorz Paprzycki, a director of the, um, the film My Country So Beautiful, uh, which has been included in the uh, Oscar long list. Um, and um, we'll be able to see uh, the entire film after today's meeting and right now a short trailer. At the scientific premier stage, we have Grzegorz Paprzecki. Good evening. Good evening. My first question, uh, is it easy for you to peacefully uh, watch the trailer of this uh, film? Well, I have seen it so many times, both the trailer and the film. Uh, I should have some uh, distance thinking about it, but uh, in, if truth be told, uh, I still I uh, feel a lot of uh, emotions uh, every time I see it. So uh, the viewers uh, feel emotions too, and uh, members of the um, US um, um, Film Academy. Uh, it was included in the uh, Oscar long list, so I'd like to congratulate you. It's a, a great success. Yes, I'm very happy about that. But uh, I think um, we should really be reasonable in uh, our uh, enthusiasm because there is still um, a lot to do, to achieve. Uh, what was the first impulse uh, why you wanted to address this, this subject, uh, this very difficult subject? Today we are going to talk about directing the entire movie, but what was the first thought that came to your head uh, when you wanted to do it? Well, there were uh, several. First of all, the issues of intolerance, uh, intolerance and exclusion, um, well, I have been very angry about them, and that's why I wanted to uh, address these issues um, through film, that's one. Um, well, when I uh, started studying at the Katowice Film School uh, on the, during the third year, we had the task to do a documentary. And one day, when I was walking uh, in Katowice at the city hall, I saw a manifestation of the uh, Polish nationalists. Uh, they were uh, against um, against um, uh, foreigners in Poland. Uh, after that manifestation, uh, the uh, ONR, ONR um, went to uh, a building in Kadowice that was uh, pl uh, playing the role of a uh, mosque. They entered uh, the mosque, um, they put up uh, speakers and 
and they played uh, an, a, re a religious tune through those speakers uh, during that um, uh, Muslim mass. That was an event that was not very uh, popular in the local uh, media. Maybe a uh, few people saw it, yes, prob probably. But that was one of the impulses that made me uh, want to address uh, nationalism within the context of, uh, of our country. And I, I contacted a member of ONR, which translates as the National Radical Camp. Uh, I think it was the uh, president of uh, ONR in Katowice. Uh, we talked, we uh, were supposed to meet uh, in a cafe, talk about some cooperation regarding uh, a film, but uh, the contact uh, well, uh, ceased. He uh, ceased to, um, to, to, to um, take my calls. I think he blocked my number. Why? Well, Maybe uh, he checked my uh, so, uh, social uh, website, uh, websites uh, and he thought that I, it was not, not a good idea to talk to me, but well, as it often happens when doing uh, documentaries, uh, luck was very uh, important because uh, at the very beginning um, of my studies I uh, lived in a dormitory with a friend who was uh, from Ukraine. I don't want to go into detail, but uh, in the end, uh, through him, I, uh, I managed to see the, um, the circles of nationalists in Ukraine, the group called the National Corps, and that was, uh, I made the first um, film where I addressed nationalism in Ukraine, not in Poland. It was completely different uh, in terms of form and in terms of content. Uh, anyway, after I managed to uh, to make this film, I decided I wanted to to address the issues of of, um, of nationalism in Poland, and I wanted to go back to that to that issue to that subject. Uh, I saw the film about Ukraine yesterday and I was really, it was very, very emotional for me, very impressive. Re, uh, remind us the, the title, uh, Chernobog, Chernobog. So we have one uh, person uh, uh, presented uh, clearly and it seemed as if the Ukrainians wanted, wanted to, uh, to cooperate with you. You did not have to hide your video camera. They wanted to, um, to present their, uh, their story. Well, let's put it like this. In terms of trust, I was lucky enough because I was trusted uh, by the leader of that group, the leader for Western Ukraine. Uh, Shvatosov was his name. Uh, while the remaining members, well, some of them did not trust me really well, but there is a lot of uh, hierarchy. So if their leader trusted me, then they did not argue with him. And the, therefore I managed to um, make this film and I was very honest, honest with him. I told him uh, it was going to be a film uh, based on observation. I told him I told him I would not uh, address or evaluate their idea uh, and neither would experts address their uh, their ideas and uh, the language barrier also helped I think because I do not speak Ukrainian uh, Świętosław does not speak Polish uh, a friend of mine was an interpreter and I think this helped uh, paradoxically uh, besides uh, this this man, uh, it was a young man, he was excited uh, to uh, have someone from Poland wanting to make a documentary about him. Yes, it looked like uh, they wanted their idea to be uh, presented in the media, something they believed in, and uh, you want to take a cool look at it uh, with a video camera and uh, presented something very um, violent. Yes, maybe that was uh, one of the arguments, yes. You said you wanted to um, have a meeting with a representative of the National uh, Radical Camp. What do you think, what could this uh, 
conversation look like? Would you um, disclose your uh, attitude to uh, to the upcoming movie? Yes. Well, I think generally speaking, uh, you, sh you should not uh, lie. Uh, you should not manipulate. Uh, you should not mislead anyone. Uh, I have often talked to nationalists. I have often uh, met with them uh, for a coffee. Uh, well, nationalism, there are different uh, phases of nationalism in Poland. There are several groups you have. Uh, the National Radical Camp, uh, the All Poland Youth, you have the uh, Sturmowce group. And uh, within those groups you have people with different levels of education, with different views. Uh, which can be surprising for, for some. So it is not just uh, hooligans who want to destroy whatever they see. Uh, some of them are um, edu well-educated people uh, that know several languages. And well, we do not agree with each other concerning ideology, but I have to respect them. Uh, Mm, saying that uh, you can talk to them peacefully, normally. Uh, it, uh, I think it's not the point to um, to avoid these people. Uh, you should not uh, avoid dialogue. Quite the contrary. All right. Uh, in the Ukrainian film, there is a very interesting distinction. It seems obvious, uh, but I have never understood what's the uh, difference between uh, patriotism and nationalism. Uh, the person you presented uh, explained that patriotism is love for your country, uh, more peaceful, uh, romantic love, while nationalism is the willingness to fight, uh, is the willingness to wage war. Uh, yes. Yes, nationalism is a lifestyle. Uh, I think that's what he was saying. Uh, for him, it was a lifestyle, and uh, also the ability to, uh, to 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 shed blood for your uh, nation. So yes, not following the uh, attitudes that you know from the Second World War. It's something that you have deep inside of you, uh, a certain style of living. All right, and now uh, the film uh, "My Country So Beautiful." Uh, someone tried uh, very uh, hard, uh, they might uh, make this movie out of the news that we have on TV, a compilation of some um, violent images that you present in your film, but you decided not to do it this way, you took your video camera and with a friend of yours you uh, you approached those groups. Yes, well, it's a good question. Can you do it? Uh, do such a documentary from news, news footage? Well, yes and no. I, uh, I've, I worked in the three TV stations as a um, as an, um, cameraman. Uh, so uh, it's an interesting point of view of uh, when you look with a video camera, camera and the difference between news and news groups and documentary groups. In, when you have news, people uh, take, make haste. You go to one place, uh, they work quickly and go back uh, or go, go away to another place, while we spend much more time uh, to document those events the events related to uh, nationalism. Uh, we wanted to go deeper, deeper, to see more, to show more. And we had uh, time to do it because the the process of making this film uh, was taking uh, an entire year. Uh, the uh, amount of footage that was well tens of uh, tens of hours, dozens of hours. So yeah, this is the difference between uh, uh, news and film documentary. Yes, I, I wanted to provoke you because I I was interested in how. Uh, how does it feel when you approach so closely? Because about photographs, you can say that uh, the photographer made a mistake if, if they did not um, approach their uh, work uh, close enough. Well, I think the viewers should uh, assess, they should evaluate. I'm glad that a, a lot of people um, have some reflections after seeing this. Well, it's not only the close approach, you have to um, aim your camera at what your eyes uh, see, at what you're expecting, what you want to, to emphasize. Yes, that's true. 
you reminded me about uh, about one thing. Well, during uh, post-production, during editing, we had so many interesting scenes which we had to dismiss because they would not be cohesive with some other scenes. Uh, the film would just fall apart somehow. Well, making a good uh, film is uh, also results from the ability not to fall in love with uh, some uh, some scenes that you did uh, that might be defective uh, at the final stage of the film. Uh, I've heard sometimes you even have to get rid of your favorite scenes. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. That's true. And when you have dozens of hours. Well, it was, um, we really had trouble uh, determining how do you want to shape the, uh, the film. Uh, we had numerous concepts, uh, we, changed, uh, we changed the concept of the film uh, many times. At the very beginning I wanted to have um, standard interviews um, in the film, so that these interviews uh, supplement the uh, remaining part of the narrative. We uh, did not do that. We decided to make it an observation-based uh, film, i.e. showing the respective events, not chronologically, and the, uh, the viewers would um, assess themselves what's good, what's bad. So you follow two groups, right? The nationalists and the ones that want to oppose them during manifestations, such as Obywatele uh, RP organization, or uh, Gabriela Wazarek, um, who sometimes protests uh, on her own against uh, nationalism, and uh, they uh, face each other. Sometimes they address you, they address the police. So it's uh, quite an, um, an intimate uh, documentary. Mm. Yes, I'm glad that you mentioned uh, Gabrysia or some other people presented in this movie. There is no, no one uh, protagonist. Um, there, is a, there are groups, um, even though it, has, um, it presents uh, many individuals, but if it wasn't the uh, good attitude of those uh, protagonists, Protagonists of um, and their support, that film uh, would never uh, come to fruition. fruition. Uh, these are the people who have presented this world of, uh, of um, nationalism, of protests, uh, and I'm very grateful uh, to them for trusting me to to to, to enter their world. And were you afraid sometimes uh, when uh, going to the other side? Well, uh, I was rather surprised than afraid. Because sometimes I had the impression that the issue of nationalism is sometimes exaggerated. But we managed to, to gather uh, such uh, shots and to be witness to such events where, uh, after which I realized that I, I was mistaken. Uh, the, and the people who uh, made me realize some things were right. And I think it's what is worth uh, stating. Well, I do not want to oversimplify reality or to divide the world into black and white. Yes, another title of, of this film could be Our Country So Divided. Yes, exactly. Uh, let's remember there is a, a lot of, uh, of grey area. The other side that fights nationalism is also not a saint, let's put it like this. I think it's logical which party is more uh, dangerous, but on the other side I also saw some behaviors that I do not tolerate and that are unacceptable for me. I give, I give you one, one example. It was not in the film, but there was an, an anti-racism or anti-fascism um, demonstration where I went as a, as a participant. And there was a group of uh, anarchists 
who, in my opinion, uh, were behaving um, identically to those on the other side, to nationalists, meaning they provoked, they wanted to have fights, they were um, offensive, etc., uh, etc. Et this is something I did not really like, and I, uh, so I think you really should take, take a cool look at it. You should, uh, you should uh, deplore uh, violence and, uh, and calls for violence, but again, the greatest um, threat in this conflict, the greatest uh, real um, threat is the um, extreme right, which uh, calls uh, Calls, uh, to, uh, calls people to do some uh, such uh, things which are unheard of, especially in Poland um, after the uh, Holocaust and, and uh, fascism. Well, in your film, uh, you, you also um, have um, shots from the university where you can see people from that remember war, uh, people who demonstrate different uh, scientific theories that allow us to to understand the world and this is a very peaceful narrative even even though it's very sad one. yes I'm well I'm glad that these uh, these scenes were presented in the film because this is a small element of dialogue that uh, that started uh, between nationalists and let's call them others, or let's call them uh, the left wing. I'm glad we saw the people who represented um, uh, all Polish uh, youth. There was a man from uh, the national radical camp, but uh, he was not included in the film in the, in the end. And maybe uh, it is, uh, it is uh, a good, uh, good idea to, to, to have dialogue, to, to speak uh, with each other. Because I know that dialogue can be effective. It's not true that people do not change. And mm, in the extreme movements, we have of, we have often seen um, situations where people change their views, changed their attitudes. And I think if everyone uh, thinks deeply, uh, has to has to understand that anyone can change, even for the better. I'm glad that you uh, that you said the word uh, dialogue. Mm, it, uh, we hope the situation is not hopeless. Maybe dialogue will be uh, what is going to save us. Well, uh, several days ago when we were talking about uh, this meeting, uh, we wanted to um, talk about um, uh, morality uh, films, uh, Vaida Zanussi. These are the directors which um, presented example um, protagonists in some difficult situations where they had to face some moral dilemmas, ethical dilemmas of the um, communist uh, times, while this film is completely different, but I think uh, still um, it's addressing a lot of uh, moral issues. Yes, well, uh, during communism we had comparisons, metaphors, while here, here you have a, a wild film, you might say. Yes, you have a direct narrative. But I'm glad uh, about this compar comparison. I think it's a, a nice compliment. Uh, and it's true to some degree. I think uh, we want. Uh, I wanted to comment uh, uh, our re on our reality, uh, not only through this film, but I also think uh, many, many uh, more countries in the world face similar uh, issues. So, so well, um, populism is um, is uh, becoming more and more popular in many places around the world, which is quite worrying because um, well, uh, we we have we have seen we remember history we we remember some tragedies so uh, some things are uh, we're going back to some things. 
Well, unfortunately, we witness uh, some things that have already taken place in history. I saw in Madrid some manifestations of people who wanted their um, living conditions to improve, and they had uh, uh, portraits of Lenin or Stalin. And it was shocking for me. How come uh, you don't have such such knowledge that they were? Uh, 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 you do not realize that they, they, they were felons, war criminals. Uh, I was in Russia once. Uh, it was a very interesting uh, visit. I was surprised by seeing the, the USSR flag there. It was in Kazan. That was very surpri surprising. Us Poles perceive communism differently. Uh, than other nations, but still it's quite worrying that uh, these uh, these war criminals uh, still are still um, uh, popular in the world. Uh, well, today we're talking about the film entitled My Country is So Beautiful uh, with the director of this film, Grzegorz Papszycki. Uh, you said how you created this film, but let's also uh, uh, say about the ones that are op opposed to such films and present different argument, arguments, saying, for example, that it's a marginal issue, not worth uh, looking at, because we, we have uh, stability, more or less, uh, you do not feel uh, threatened uh, on a daily basis, so why, why making such a, such a film? Well, like I said uh, before, sometimes, uh, sorry, in the past I did not realize uh, the scale of, uh, of the issue of um, nationalization of uh, life. Uh, what, well, it's not a marginal issue, I have to tell, tell you. For example, the uh, Independence March, uh, which used to be organized um, by uh, city authorities, and national authorities, while today it's an event uh, organized by nationalists. You have the uh, March Niepodległości Association, the Independence March uh, Association. Uh, the nationalists organize it. So it's not something that uh, you should ignore, especially that uh, uh, this, these marches attract people from, from other uh, countries, yes, such as the Forzanova, uh, people from the Forzanova organization, it's a neo-fascist organization from Italy. I forgot the, the name of one of the leaders of that group, but it was a person uh, that was uh, accused of terrorism who in 1985 escaped um, Italy after a terrorist attack in Bologna. He was accused of organizing this, um, this act. Uh, I think this, this, uh, this uh, crime uh, became um, around the sta statute of limitation, but you know, uh, it was a person um, and there were many other people who, um, who, uh, who identified themselves with uh, neo-fascists and uh, they, well, made speeches during, during these marches, yes. Um, Warsaw was destroyed completely, and uh, it, Italy also played well um, a significant role in the, during the Second World War. And it's very interesting that such movements appear in Italy. Uh, but well, uh, there were people in the uh, in the peaceful part of the march with children, with um, with um, with fa uh, families, and uh, they well yes. Uh, that's true that there is uh, space for them in those uh, marches. We should not say that during the independence marches there are only um, Nazis or fascists. That, that wouldn't be true. Uh, but there are uh, groups in the march, um, there are nationalists, as simple as that. And you know, I understand that uh, there are also uh, people, families who want to celebrate and yeah, that's, that's their right. And do you have any hopes uh, related to, to dialogue with uh, nationalists? Well, you always should have a hope. I'm not a prophet, I'm not, I don't know what's going to happen. 
But I know that if you only yell at someone, if you throw bricks at someone, if you do not listen to someone, then you will not be able to uh, to change to be able to change their mind. You should start with dialogue. We will see if it's going to be successful of, or not. Mm, well, before this meeting, I, I mentioned the, the film that you sent me recently. It was a, a work of the students, including one film that was completely different than the one that we're going to see today. It's the film uh, People Talk uh, in the Countryside, or in other words, People Talks. Uh, and I was very uh, surprised by that film. It was a very poetic story about some similar issues, but presented as if in, a, in the best possible novel. Uh, thank you very much for the kind words. Yes, it was an a story, uh, but also it addressed uh, the issues of um, intolerance. You saw there the uh, metaphorical um, story where two intruders, two young uh, Romani people, you have quote, quote unquote intruders, quote unquote, or two aliens, you might say. Enter a house occupied by a, by a man. Uh, the man wants to help them. These these boys, these children. While on the other hand, uh, he is um, prejudiced to some degree uh, as a result of his. Uh, mm, Past. Uh, and whether he's going to help uh, these boys, well, to learn about that, please uh, see this this film, this short film. I think it was a quite a good metaphor, which you can uh, you can apply to different situations uh, of uh, nowadays in Poland. I have a phone in my hand to read some questions from uh, from some participants. Can Poland become a country where you can have um, uh, uh, grey uh, views, not only white or black views? Well, uh, that's a very great question. I do not like to be categorized as left or right wing. I would place myself uh, in, a, in the center. But in my opinion, the Poland does not have political parties or, or political movements uh, characterized by uh, reason, by a centrist uh, approach to some uh, political or social issues. I believe it's going to change. I'm not sure if it's going to happen soon. We're, um, we have a lot of uh, news from both sides, which also affects our, our, our minds. Yes, I think the word reason uh, would be a key solution to, to, to many aspects of our lives, and I hope that that these, uh, this uh, political and social space um, is going to be demonstrated by reason too. If, well, a question to the author, what is the, uh, the risk or danger related to nationalism? Well, the danger of uh, nationalism, the risk of nationalism, well, nationalism is um, uh, often connected to exclusion. There are always some people who are the others, and us, we are better. And usually the others um, that perceived as uh, worse people uh, are perceived as a threat to, to our country, to our society. Uh, the, such a myth is um, developed, and the tactics of uh, exclusion reflects an, in a negative way on our society. 
because some people uh, start to perceive the others as worse people, which uh, results in um, in um, social tensions, sometimes uh, even crimes. Uh, examples include the uh, genocide in Srebrenica, uh, which started from uh, nationalism and uh, nationalist ideology. Uh, here, yeah, it was a brother against brother in such conflicts. Uh, yes, it's a, gr it's a very dramatic uh, situation which we should um, avoid. The Hutututsi case, uh, another great one, uh, there was a division uh, between Hutu, the Hutu and the Tutsi. I do not remember exactly what it was. I think it was because it, uh, the country was a Belgian uh, colony. They divided people into the Hutu and the Tutsi. The Hutu were the cattle herders. So the two groups, uh, well, they, this depended on the functions, functions that they uh, performed. And the division was so strong that uh, yeah, it split the nation into two. And the result was uh, crimes. One of the halves was uh, perceived as worse, and that was the reason for them to be killed. Well, so what is the point of making such a, um, a film? Can you say? Uh, here we have questions um, uh, asked by our viewers. People are listening to us. Uh, right now, uh, is it in time to intervene, to act uh, when you see uh, such uh, threats, violent threats in the streets? I think, well, the key issue is um, that we should not be. Uh, we should not be um, impassive. We should not be neutral. Mm, everyone, uh, as a citizen, uh, has uh, strength power. You should not be uh, unmoved if you see, uh, for example, a foreigner who is um, attacked on a tram. Uh, you should always react in such situations. Um, if you do not, if you do nothing, it means you accept what's going on. So. Let's remember that. Another question. Uh, have you felt uh, threatened at any time when you were making uh, your film? There were some such cases, not many of them. Uh, there weren't many because usually and during uh, at such events uh, you have a police. And uh, however you um, you uh, assess the police, and they always try to look after the safety of both parties. And usually, even though there were some cases um, that were different in Katowice, usually the police um, um, did their uh, jobs. Uh, ensured uh, the safety of people, and this was the reason why we usually and relatively felt safe. Did the, did the police uh, make sure you, you you have you have a chance to direct? Yes, but for example, one of the police officers uh, blocked the the arm of one of the women who wanted to block uh, nationalists a march. So you know, it's not the situation is not perfect, but in most cases, the police did their job uh, well. And this allowed us to feel safe. If there, if there uh, had been no police, uh, I think we would have seen uh, more extreme situations, more uh, more um, injuries uh, among uh, the um, uh, demonstrators. The police is not perfect, natu naturally. And uh, the police consists of people with different views. That's natural, and uh, something that has to be emphasized. But well, I'm glad. We have had uh, the police. There were some dangerous uh, situations, but fortunately nothing has happened. I think the most um, dangerous one for me resulted from a woman who wanted to grab my video camera. As a, but that's just as a side note. Uh, another question. Why? Why being fascinated by um, documentaries? Man, there are many documentaries uh, produced around the world. Some authors devote a lot of time to one subject. Are you impressed by some some um, some artists, some uh, directors that you would like to um, to follow? It's a good question. Uh, I have recently seen a documentary. Uh, 
which uh, has fascinated me uh, because it always, uh, it's always uh, without uh, just one protagonist. And in fil film school, uh, you're usually told that uh, a good protagonist is key to a good story, which certainly is true. But Villorib Zorin uh, is a great uh, example of how that rule was broken. Uh, where uh, there was no person, but there, the place, the place was the protagonist. So this was the uh, the film which has recently inspired me to some degree, maybe changed my way of thinking. And I think it has made br brought me more courage uh, to, to approach my ideas uh, when thinking about non-standard um, uh, protagonists. And do you have any, any dreams, any plans concerning uh, fictional films? Well, yes, yes, I have some plans. We will see if we are going to um, be successful uh, in making uh, a full-blown uh, fictional film in the future. But it's, no, it's not so obvious uh, when graduating from a film school that suddenly you have so many things to do, you can do whatever you want. It's not like that. Uh, you really have to, to demolish the, let's say, the first first wall. Could you say you have to climb it? All right, too, yes. That's another good metaphor. You can destroy it, you can climb it, but still you have to, let's say, go, continue going forward. I hope it's going to work. Uh, you told me also that you were that you were about a little tired uh, by nationalism. That you saw this film many many times. Uh, that's a very interesting uh, thing to say. Well, an interesting feeling. Yes, when I was doing this uh, film, I I had a lot of emotions concerning what I was. Um, uh, directing uh, sleepless nights. Well, it uh, that uh, that um, that problem has been very very strong for me. And there was a moment when uh, I uh, lost my nerve. Uh, I should. I usually believe that if you're a strong person, you should control your nerves. That's why I was angry that I didn't at this one chance. I try to avoid uh, negative emotions. Limit. Uh, I uh, limit my own access to to, to media. Uh, well, I I would rather um, read uh, positive uh, news, positive information. Like uh, if you go to the gym, if you destroy uh, your uh, muscles uh, on a daily basis, if you do not uh, allow your your body to regenerate, to rest, then your body will uh, will uh, not work properly. And I think it's similar. Um, in mental terms, uh, we should not just uh, digest too too much uh, negative news. Yes, it's a it's something uh, wonderful. Uh, we are now at the uh, scientific premier stage of the University of Silesia. So a question now about your uh, film school. Uh, it has this amazing uh, building uh, which received which has received uh, all the. Um, architectural um, awards uh, of the world. You have graduated from this school. Tell us about your impressions. What kind of time was it for you? Well, I really appreciate uh, what I was taught by all the uh, wha by, by, by all the um, teachers, lecturers. Yes, Mrs. Um, Beata Jelovic. It's a real angel of this film school. It's a professor who uh, never refuses to help uh, her students, and I really uh, appreciate her help. I'm glad that she, uh, she, she, she helped me uh, make this movie. Uh, the Katowice Film School taught me not only uh, a lot of tools, but also changed my way of looking at films, of looking at the world. And I think that often during uh, during some classes, 
with some lecturers. I, I heard the some some words, some statements that changed my way of thinking about some uh, about life, about some uh, some issues, and this was also very very important. So. What what kind of moments were like that? Krzysztof Zanossi once told me, uh, "You have to live so as not to not to waste your life," and uh, I really remembered that. I know it's not about film, but uh, uh, in your case, well, I'll just keep it uh, keep it to myself to 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 make it a mystery. I will not disclose the uh, the secrets of the film school. Uh, the patron of this uh, film school uh, is Krzysztof uh, Kieślowski, who was um, who made many um, documentary films. We know his three colors. We know the Decalogue, but we all, but no, not many people know that he uh, made the uh, documentaries about um, the communist times. Uh, yes, that's true. It's uh, still a, uh, a great film. Uh, it was made uh, using some uh, some some simple tools, uh, simple interview um, forms, uh, but it presented uh, a large degree of truth about the then society. But I think it's a still a, a a film that still uh, that still applies today. Yes, one of the uh, films, uh, The Office, presented the, uh, the reality that was very brutal, very very cold, where people were not uh, uh, valuable at all. Many such films uh, were prohibited from um, from uh, from being shown. But now we have the My Country, so beautiful. This country is this uh, film is uh, well. It's rewarded. It's presented. Uh, is it going to change reality? Hmm. An interesting question. Well, uh, the sh short documentaries are not as effective as uh, long ones. That's a fact. I hope in the future I'll I'll make a, a longer film that's going to be. Um, uh, just as important because the the reach of the short documentaries is uh, much lower than than uh, cinema films but well you don't know if we're going to go back to to, to cinemas uh, you have streaming platforms now well but uh, you, you have uh, short documentaries even on the uh, commercial platforms yes not many but yes yes they they do appear there is hope uh, these uh, short uh, documentaries are going to to exist on streaming platforms. Tell me what did uh, the viewers tell you um, after uh, seeing your film? What were the opinions? Where? Well, there were um, different different reactions. Many people had not realized what uh, what what was going on in the streets. Many people do not watch the news. Maybe that's why some people were just uh, some people uh, were just um, adamant, immovable. But I think uh, for most viewers, um, that film was uh, emotional. Uh, and uh, the film shook uh, many viewers. I think what's important that the film is a starting point for some discussions, some conversations, which you can see see today. So I am glad that we can discuss social issues uh, on account of this film. Are you um, uh, preparing a film right now? I have some plans. I'd like to take an original approach to the issue of um, migration or um, the issue of uh, refugees. Last year I visited uh, a re refugee camp and I'd like it to make a film. Uh, a, a long film, a full-length film, but we will see. There, there is some trouble concerning it, but let's hope it's going to disappear. You're a very peaceful person. No, no. <laughs> Tell this to my wife. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we have Grzegorz Paprzycki at the uh, scientific premier stage of the University of Silesia. I'd like to gr congratulate you again on the uh, Oscar long list for your uh, film. We're going to see your film in a moment. And on, on the 25th of February at 6 p.m., we're going to have a meeting with Mrs. Alexandra Hawat from the um, Faculty of Arts and um, Education, who is going to to play Karol Rathaus uh, music. I think it's going to be a very interesting um, meeting, uh, completely different uh, in, uh, subjects, different uh, areas. So we have, uh, I'm very glad that uh, we can present uh, those during our meetings. Thank you very much for this meeting. You're going to, to, be, a, to be able to ask questions using Zoom. And now let's see, let's see the film. Yes, I'd like to welcome everyone to see and the film entitled My Country So Beautiful. Enjoy.